Well, hello there. My name is Mark Hoppus. I play in a band called Blink-182, and you're watching Muzu.tv. Uh, do I think that it is easier for bands now to break, to break out, given the advent of digital recording and distribution? No, I don't. I think that it is just as difficult now as it ever was. I think that because so many different bands have access to, um, easy access to distribution from Facebook to SoundCloud to MySpace to all these hundreds of avenues that bands can get music out. It's difficult. It's as difficult now as it was back in the day because there's so much noise that it's difficult to rise above the noise and get noticed for having uh, good songs and good talent. I think that the digital age of music is a wonderful, terrific opportunity. There's definite downsides to it. I think the upside of digital music completely overweighs the downside of it. I think that it's a great way for bands to distribute their music. I think it's a great way for bands to stay in touch with their fans. I think it's a great way for bands to market themselves. I think that uh, it's an amazing way for music to be available to people all over the world instantaneously. Uh, that being said, it's very difficult for bands right now, especially new bands, to uh, make a living for themselves by creating music. The actual thing that people love, the music, the art that people create, that is the soundtrack for people's lives, that is what gets them up in the morning, that's what gets them through a hard breakup, that is what feels that connection. The art, the music, um, is a lost leader almost. For bands to support themselves nowadays, they basically have to rely on touring and ticket sales, I mean touring and t-shirt sales, uh, to support themselves. And it seems like there needs to be some kind of fair middle ground for both the artist and for the consumer. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a stated fact that the people that are most likely to download music are also the ones most likely to buy music. And I think that that's a very good indication that people who are passionate about music see the value of it and I think that that needs to be uh, that needs to be equated on the large scale as well but it should never be so uh, such a difficult barrier of entry that people can't get access to music so I think that that's the ultimate downside uh, Rock the House is an initiative that was put forth in the Houses of Parliament in the UK by Nigel Adams and Mike Weatherly. It's basically a nationwide battle of the bands. It's to get people inspired about music. It's to promote live music. It's to promote the conversation about intellectual property and the rights of musicians as well as the rights of music fans. And it culminates in a gigantic battle of the bands of which I'm a patron and I'm a judge. I'm a very, very evil judge. I'm like Simon Cowell times a million, but with a worse attitude and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it. Rock the House is different than I would say a lot of normal battles of the bands because it is put on by government and I think that there needs to be an interaction between the people that make the laws about music and the people that create the music and the people that perform music and that kind of connection and so much of the creative process is and should be outside of the realm of government but at the same time, there are certain issues that go on with bands, that go on with people that love music, that are fans of music, that the government might not necessarily get. And this is a good way to start that conversation between the two parties. I've been very fortunate in my career to not only get to be in a band, to tour in a band, to write songs, um, host a TV show, produce bands, you know, be on the radio, do all different kinds of things. First and foremost, I play in Blink-182. That's that's my love, that's my passion. I'm very fortunate that I get to do different things every day. Some days I wake up and I tour, some days I wake up and I do a TV show, some days I wake up and I'm here in a hotel in Dublin doing interviews and nothing's ever the same and I like that about my life. It's always something different. Yeah, after five years, uh, Blink has reformed. We reformed about three years ago and uh, it felt like going home. It felt like the break that we took from Blink was very necessary. It was something that we all needed to go through. Uh, as painful, as destroying, as awful as it was, it was definitely something that we as a band needed to go through to get to the point that we're at now, which I think is a lot better than it ever has been before. And it feels like home. 
go walking on stage with Tom and Travis feels like where I'm supposed to be. Writing songs with them feels natural, and uh, I'm really stoked that the reaction has been so positive for uh, for our band coming back after five years to get another chance to do this has been really cool. Uh, the best part of touring, really the the only, well not the only great thing about touring, the part of touring that makes everything that's wrong with touring great is the hour and a half that you spend on stage every night. That's what it's all about. The performance, the connection with the people that are there, that release of energy, that sharing of energy with the audience is unlike anything else that you experience ever in your life. And uh, it makes all the travel, all the boredom, all the um, in and out of hotels, being gone from family, it makes everything totally worth it. Uh, I, do I have any outrageous tour stories? There's a thousand outrageous tour stories, none of which I can remember right now. There's a lot of broken glass. There's a lot of, uh, it's just messy. Tour is a messy enterprise. It's, uh, you're never in the same place twice. Um, there's people that will clean up after you, will clean up a mess. Not only a physical mess, but any trouble that you get yourself into. Luckily, we're not that mo not troublesome of a band. The stuff that we do is mostly easily fixable. Coffee tables, um, dressing rooms, things like that. If we could tour the world with one band, current or past, it would have to be the Beatles. I can't think of a better all-around band in the history of music than the Beatles. Um, Although it wouldn't be good for us because nobody would give a damn about our band because the Beatles would be playing after us, so it might not be the best thing. It'd probably be better to go for a really terrible band, which is what we try and do. When we go out on tour, we definitely try and take out bands that are worse than us so that we can shine through, even though like our suckiness is here, but their suckiness is here, therefore we look better by comparison. So maybe not the Beatles, although I get to see the Beatles play every night, so maybe that'd be worth it. I do live in London now. I have, I have changed cities at least for a couple years. Um, my favorite thing about London is that it is the exact opposite of living in Southern California. And I love Southern California. I love everything about it. I've lived there pretty much my whole life. But it's nice to come over to the UK and Ireland where the weather's totally different. It's not sunny all the time, although today's a gorgeous day. Um, there's a lot of history here. Southern California is brand new comparatively. I mean, there are places a block from my house that are older than my entire country. Um, I like not having a car. I like walking everywhere. LA is not really a city for walking. And uh, it's just a different cultural experience for my kid, which I think is important for him to, to meet different people and to. You know, we go to Paris on the weekend or we go to Rome, he gets to see cool places. So it's, it's a good cultural experience for us all. Uh, the band I'm listening to at the minute, the, there's a song I can't stop listening to. It's a Gautier song, somebody that I used to know. And uh, I started off loving it and then I started, and then I went into really loving it. And now it's just like, I can't get it out of my head and it's starting to really piss me off. Um, but his, I like a lot of the songs on his record and I think that that's probably the one to watch in 2012. For 2012, the band is touring. We tour for like two weeks in the States and then we come over, we do an extensive UK tour, Ireland, France, Germany, Prague, uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, uh, I'm probably forgetting someone there, but it's a pretty uh, substantial European UK tour that we're really excited about and then uh, hopefully writing some new music. For me it's uh, just writing music and continuing to do my TV show in the States and try and be a good dad to my son and that's it. It's a lot. It seems easy but it's a lot. Punk rock in 2012. I think that I think that pop punk has kind of gotten really watered down I think that uh, there needs to be something new that comes in and puts some life into it. Um, no Effects had a great song probably 10 years ago uh, that said the desperation's gone. And it was 
probably true then. It's even 10 times more true now. It feels a little static and generic. It needs to be spiced up. And I think that punk rock especially is cyclical. And I think that because pop punk became so mainstream that it's just kind of see, it's just kind of starting to, to water out and there needs to be some new vitality brought into the scene and shaken up.